So this is our first session related to IGCSE physics. First, we start with the overview of syllabus, and then we'll start our first topic, which about which is about length and time. The syllabus codes. You have two ways to select. If you want your result in alphabets, then you can select a code zero six two zero. And again, uh, the same like chemistry. You have code and you have extended. If you select a code, the paper you will select combination paper one, paper three, and either paper five or six. But if you select a code, the maximum grade you will have C. So that's why you will not select a code. We'll select an axis, uh, extended one, in which the combination is paper two. Paper four, either paper five or six, but we'll select paper six. So you will select the combination two, four, and six, and the candidates are eligible for the grades from A star to G. So you will select the extended combination, which is two, four, and six. If you need your result in numeral from nine to one, then you will select a code zero nine seven two, and again it will also have core extended if you select a core paper one three and five or six then eligible from one to five but if you select the extended one then combination will be paper two paper four and five or six but we'll select paper six so our combination should be two four and six the only difference is the grading like in so you have two codes for uh, physics zero six two five 0972 the only difference here you will get result in alphabetical order uh, in uh, in the alphabets where in 0972 you will get the result in numeral so you should select an extended one why extended one because extended one you can score high grades as compared to that of core because if you select a core, you maximum you can score five. But if you select the extended, the maximum you can score nine. So the two codes are zero six two five and zero nine seven two. Then the papers which we select for extended, the students who are taking the extended uh, part, so they will select paper two. Paper two is multiple choice questions, MCQs, about 30% of your result based on paper two. And the duration for this exam is 45 minutes and you will find about 40 marks for this paper and 40 MCQs are there. Then you will select paper four. Duration for this exam is one hour, 15 minutes. This is mainly theory, which include the structure questions as well as numerical. And 50% of your result, the final result based on paper four. Then paper six, which is alternative to practical duration for this exam is one hour. The total result um, based or the weightage of the paper six for the total result is only 20%. And 40 marks are there, the duration is one hour. So, you will select paper two, paper four, and paper six. Any question related to the syllabus or the combination? So basically, either you will select 0625 or you will select 0972. If you select 0625, you can score from A star to G, A star the highest one. And if you select 0972, you can score from nine to one the maximum the highest grade is nine which grading system is better it depends on the country in which you want to continue your study like example mostly uh, students from egypt they are taking the numeral grading because in egypt they have equivalent for these numeral grading but for students from south asia they normally prefer alphabetical because their system they have 
the conversion or equivalent to alphabetical grading. So it depends on the region where you belong to and according to your region you can select but it's there's no restriction. The difference between paper five and paper six, the paper five is a practical, like you will perform the experiment, whereas paper six, you will not actually perform the experiment, but you will write the things related to paper experiments. Like in the paper, you will write, they will ask the question, like measure using a ruler, measure or plot the graph, draw the graph, write the result. So you don't have to perform the experiment, Yes, you can select paper five, but normally uh, in our region, the, the schools are not providing this facility that a uh, student can perform the experiment. So that's why most of the students are selecting paper six, but there's no restriction. You can select either paper five or paper six, but the, the simple or the easy one is paper six in which you don't have to perform the experiment. You just have to measure according to the paper size. And when you're asking a question, it's better your question should be visible to everyone so that others can also understand that uh, for what question I'm answering. So they have, uh, they, so if they have a doubt, uh, that will be cleared as well. So when you're asking a question, it, you can use your mic or you can use a chat, but that should be visible to everyone so that the others can also understand the question and they are also benefited from your question to clear their doubts. So let's move on to the syllabus now, the syllabus content. So there are five main topics. These are not chapters, these are main topics and these topics have multiple chapters. So five main topics are there, the journal physics, thermal physics, the properties of wave include light and sound, electricity and magnetism, and atomic physics. So these are the five topics which will cover this whole physics syllabus. But again, I said this five topic does not mean five chapters. It means each topic may have different number of chapter. Like example, normally in general physics, there are eight chapters. Thermal physics, three chapters. Uh, light, this properties of wave, light and sound, four chapters. Electricity and magnetism, six chapters. And atomic physics, two chapters. So we start first with, we'll follow the sequence. We'll start with the journal physics, then followed by thermal properties of wave, electricity, magnetism, and at the last we will do atomic. How many days will take to finish all of them? On average, it takes about five months to complete this whole syllabus. But it may vary how it may vary depends on the student's response. And in online sessions, we are restricted, like uh, there are some limitations as well. So we do not rush into topic and we'll try to finish within six months with past papers and the structure questions. Let's start with the first topic. The first topic is about the length and the time. But before the start, there are, there are certain basic things which you should know. Number one, the fundamental quantities or the base quantities with their units. So there are basically seven fundamental or seven base quantities. What are the seven base quantities? The quantity is the length mass, time, electric current, temperature, amount of substance and luminous intensity or light intensity. And what are their SI unit? The term SI means system international unit or the base unit. Because this, what is this SI unit or system international? Basically, this system international, this is a system which is developed by 
different uh, physics from different region and they consider that there are seven quantities which we call them as a base quantities or fundamental quantities why exactly these seven quantities because these quantities we can measure them directly like example if i want to measure a length i can use a ruler and directly i can measure the length if i want to measure the mass i can just place the object in on the balance and i can measure the mass if i want to measure a time then i can use a stopwatch or a clock i can measure the time so because these quantities can be measured directly so they consider them as the fundamental or the base quantities there are seven but you don't have to learn seven you just have to learn first five of them with their units so which one you have to learn you have to learn length as well as the unit of the length the SI unit, system international unit is meter. Length can be in kilometer. The length can be in kilometer. It can be in millimeter. It can be in centimeter. But these, these are the units of the length, but these are not the SI units. What is the SI unit of the length? The SI unit of the length is only meter. So if in a question, if a length is given in kilometer, millimeter or centimeter, so what you have to do, you have to always convert the length into meter. Same thing. The term amount of substance means the number of the particle, like how many particles are there? We call that as a amount of substance or the unit is mole. But you don't have to learn uh, the last two. Like luminous intensity, light intensity, you will not learn and amount of substance, you don't have to learn. Same thing, a mass, a mass can be measured in gram. A mass can be measured in gram, milligram, tons. But what is the SI unit? The SI unit of mass is kilogram. So if in a question, in any question, if mass is given in gram, milligram, tons, what you have to do, you have to convert the mass into kilogram. Same thing, time. If a time is given in, time can be in minutes, it can be in hours, it can be in days, weeks, years. But what you have to convert, you have to always convert the time which is given in second. Same thing, electric current, it can be milliampere, it can be microampere. How to convert the unit that we will discuss, but if it is given in milliampere or microampere, what you have to do, you have to convert always the current in ampere and temperature. Temperature, the units of the temperature can be degree centigrade, can be Fahrenheit, but what you have to do, you have to convert always in Kelvin. So the SI base unit for length is meter, for mass is kilogram, time is second, current is ampere and temperature is Kelvin. Is it clear? The concept of the base units and the base quantities. So basically what are base quantities the fun, uh, like a group of physics explain that these quantities can be directly measured and they are only single unit which can represent these quantities so we call them as a base quantity So for exam point of view, you just have to learn the first five, length, mass, time, electric current and temperature. But there are other quantities which we called as a derived quantity. But what is the difference between the base quantity and the derived quantity? Basically derived quantities are calculated from two or more measurement. Like directly we don't get these quantities, we have to do or carry out a measurement or measure two or three different measurement we need 
to get the quantity. Example, volume. If I want to measure a vo volume, example, if we have a cube, directly I cannot measure the volume. So what I have to do? I have to measure the length. I have to measure the width and I have to measure the height. So to get the volume of the cube, I have to multiply length, then width and then height. And I have to measure three different quantities to get the volume. So when we are measuring or calculating a quantity by different values what we call that as we call that as a derived quantity so volume is a drive quantity why volume is a drive quantity because directly you don't get the volume you have to measure length width and height in case of cube and get the volume same way density what is density the definition that when we proceed in the syllabus i will explain each quantity in detail but right now because this is a start so I'm not going in definition of a density, but what is density? Density can be found. So to get the density, I have to measure the mass and I have to measure the volume. So density to get the density, I'm first should get the mass and then I should get the volume. So I have to calculate two quantities to get the density. That is why density is also a derived quantity. Same way about speed. To get the speed, I have to measure a distance and I have to measure the time. So we have to measure distance and time to get the speed. So what is this quantity? Speed is a derived quantity. And if I want to measure A force, these are the, if I want to measure the force here, the, the, uh, Newton is a unit, basically the force will be the quantity. So if I want to measure the force, how we measure the force, it is mass multiplied by change in speed or acceleration. So I have to measure force by two quantities. That is why force is also known as the drive quantity. So the easiest way to remember how to work out whether it is a drive quantity or a fundamental, if you remember fundamental, like seven fundamental, if you remember seven fundamental, so any quantity other than these seven are always drive quantity. So if I give an example, we have to sort out these quantities as fundamental and drive so example mass Fundamental or derived mass of an object. So mass is a fundamental, the basic, so mass will be here. Length. So length is also fundamental, but how we know it's a fundamental or a drive. So I told, if you remember seven fundamental quantities, any quantity other than those seven are known as a drive quantity. So what you have to do? You have to just remember the seven fundamental. So if you remember these seven, any quantity other than these seven will be refers to the drive one. Energy, drive or fundamental.
so energy will be drive acceleration derived or fundamental acceleration so acceleration drive. so acceleration is a drive quantity because the seven fundamental quantities are length mass time temperature uh, amount of substance and light intensity what about pressure fundamental or drive you can use your mic as well it's up to you what do you find it easy convenient you can use that yes abdullah drive so that is the right so same thing same way for like example if i say temperature So what is temperature fundamental or drive so temperature is a fundamental quantity so it will be in this column so is it clear the concept of the fundamental and the drive quantity so you should be able to distinguish that which is the fundamental and which one is a drive then being a science student or being a physics student there are certain things which you have to memorize or learn and one of them is a prefixes basically or st the standard forms because in exam uh, some of the questions they use certain prefixes certain numbers or certain forms instead of writing the complete number example example in the question it is written uh, the time is 30 nano second so how you understand what is the meaning of this nano so for this one for this purpose what you have to do you have to learn the prefixes and these are the prefixes we normally use so what is the meaning of a nano nano means it is 10 power minus 9 as you can see here if it is written nano what is the meaning of a nano you can write 0.000 till 1 or you can write 10 power minus 9 so actually when we write the whole the complete answer if it is written time is 30 nano second so what does it means it means the time is equals to 30 into nano means 10 power minus 9 so 30 into 10 power minus 9 second so that is the actual value of the time so you have to understand that these terms because most of the question in numericals you will find instead of giving the numbers directly they normally use the prefixes so what what are the prefixes normally they use it can be t So, and instead of writing full they use these letters if it is t it means tera t e r a if it is capital g it means it is giga if it is capital m it means it is mega capital k it means kilo same thing if it is A small p it means pico A small n means nano 
is this is a greek alphabet like a u that is called mu this is a greek alphabet which we call a mu so if it is mu is there it, it is called micro and if a small m is there it means it is milli and what are the meanings terra means it is 10 power 12 giga means 10 power 9 mega means 10 power 6 kilo means 10 power 3 so all the positive powers like positive 12 plus 12 plus 9 plus 6 and plus 3 we use capital letters and if it is small letters like pico is there it means it is 10 power minus 12 nano 10 power minus 9 micro 10 power minus 6 and milli 10 power minus 3 so these are the scientific notations we normally use when a question is there so if i say the Temperature is 30 or time is 50 ms. So what this M stands for, this S is a unit. And what is the meaning of this milli, this small uh, M, it means milli. And that is a prefix and what prefix we use if milli is there so ten, um, small m means milli it means 10 power minus 3 so actually the time is 50 into 10 power minus 3 second and this, when you substitute the value of the time in your uh, numericals so it should be 50 into 10 power minus 3 and how to substitute exponent minus 3 as most of you are using scientific calculators. So on your scientific calculator, there is a button. Some of the calculator, it is written EXP, capital E, XP, some of the calculators. Or some of the calculators, it is written 10 power. So yes, you can use a calculator in exam calculate the scientific calculators are allowed so whenever you're so doing the exam you have you're allowed to use a scientific calculator so you will use scientific calculator like here so when i substitute like example the last question it was 50 millisecond so how in on scientific calculator how i will write 50 millisecond so this is 50 then exponent exp and milli was there milli means minus 3 so i will write minus 3 and then i press equal to so actually 50 millisecond is equals to 0 0.05 yes scientific calculators are different from normal calculator Scientific calculators have more functions, more uh, different mathematical functions can be performed in a scientific calculator as compared to normal calculator. Is it clear how you will use a simple scientific calculator? Because in exam, when you're substituting a value, I'll give another example. If it is written, the mass is Seventy capital uh, M means mega kid. Or small M I'm using it means milligram. So mass is seventy milligram, but when I substitute the values, I should remove the prefix. I should not use milli here. Only the unit should be there. Gram is a unit. 
and M is a prefix. So 70 and this M, what it stands for? Small m stands for 10 power minus 3. So I will write 70 into 10 power minus 3 grams. But when I substitute this in a scientific calculator, I will substitute. So it is 70, 70, then exponent. Some uh, of the calculator it is written exp, some of the calculator is written 10 power. So 70 exponent and that was minus 3. So that is equivalent to 0 0.07. Is it clear to everyone? So you have to learn these prefixes. If it is Terra, if it is Terra, it means 10 power 12. If it is Giga, it means 10 power 9. If it is Mega, 10 power 6. Yes, Sime, what's your question? Kilo, 10 power 3. These are extra deci and centi. Milli is there, 10 power minus 3. Micro, 10 power minus 6. Nano, 10 power minus 9. And Pico, 10 power minus 12. Yes, Saim Ahmed, what's your question? You can use a mic if you are finding difficult to type. Sir, I have a question. Sir, well, if you are asking the value or quantity of Terra. Hmm. So, sir, can we decide from standard form and value both? Or like we both have to like, uh, both no, are no. important. Uh, for example, if it is Terra and you just write in a standard form, that is also correct. It's not necessary you convert okay. the final number. Like if it is written, like normally uh, memories are there like GB, like 60 GB, yes. gigabytes. So basically yes, yes. Byte, is a, byte is a unit, giga means what? Giga means 10 power 9. So you can write 16 to 10 power 9B. So that is also okay, correct. And on your, you don't have to further convert this into normal number. Even if you use this value, that is also right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, Abdullah. So what if the unit is not in the SI unit? Uh, do we have to convert it? Yes, then we unit? have to convert. Like example, in this example, when we got, we are getting the answer in gram. After getting this answer in gram, then we will convert into kilogram, the SI unit. So we have to convert the units in SI. Is it clear, Abdullah? Sir Faraz. Yes, sir. If you want to measure the length, the learning objective first, like when you are studying this uh, topic, what is the learning objective? Use and describe the use of rules, rules here and measuring cylinders to find the length. Here the rule is not refers to like certain rule or law. It is refers to a scale. So you should be used and describe the use of ruler or a scale and measuring cylinders as well as the formulas which are related to measuring the length and volume and understand the micrometer screw gauge and use to measure very small distances. So in this session, we will discuss how we can measure the length by using different apparatus and the volume and how we can use a micrometer. So first thing, what you should know, you should know the least count, the smallest value, which these instrument can record a ruler, a scale, normal scale, what you are using, what is the smallest value? If you have a scale right now, what is the smallest value on your scale? You see not zero, zero is not like you cannot define zero after zero. What is the first line represent? 
on your ruler or a scale, the first line representing what? Which number? Zero point one. So basically, because yeah, zero point one and either centimeter or uh, millimeter. Your uh, the normally you're using your scale. Yeah, it, it's in centimeter. Your scale can measure in millimeter as well as in centimeter. But the smallest value which your ruler or a scale can measure, that is zero point one centimeter. Or if I convert centimeter into millimeter, that is one millimeter, because we multi to convert the centimeter into millimeter, we multiply by ten. So if your scale is smallest value, your scale can measure zero point one centimeter. If you I multiply by ten, it can measure one millimeter. So the smallest value which a ruler or a scale can measure that is zero point one. A vernier caliper. This is also a measuring instrument. But you will not study this vernier caliper as it was not. It was part of the syllabus before 2016, but 2017 onward, 16 onward, it's not there in the syllabus. But this you should uh, know as a student. You should know that the smallest value which a vernier caliper can measure is 0.01 centimeter or 0.1 millimeter, and the micrometer screw gauge that we will discuss in detail. That can measure up to 0.001 centimeter or 0.01 millimeter. My question is that which instrument is the most accurate here? By looking at their smallest value, which instrument or which apparatus is the most accurate here, and why? So which instrument or apparatus is the most accurate? So the most accurate is a micrometer because why micrometer is the most accurate? Because it can measure a very small quantity. So if your apparatus or instrument can measure a small quantity, that is considered to be the most accurate instrument. So if I have two apparatus, one of the apparatus can measure zero point zero two. Another apparatus can measure zero point one. Which apparatus is more accurate, A or B? A can measure zero point zero two centimeter, and B can measure zero point one centimeter. Which apparatus is more accurate here? Both are in centimeters. So the correct answer is A because A can measure a very small quantity, where which is zero point zero two as compared to B, which can only measure zero point one centimeter. Less than a minute left, so I'll continue the discussion. Share another link and continue the discussion.